Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about the RME Babyface Pro or RME Babyface Pro FS, which is the newer model, which is a really nice audio interface and uh, relatively basic features as it looks. You have four inputs, like two microphone inputs, and then on the side you have input three and four for line inputs, for example. And then you have four outputs, analog outputs, one and two, typically used to connect speakers. And then three and four is the headphones output, shared headphones for big and small connector or to connect two sets of head headphones. Anyway, and then there is an additional eight inputs and outputs through ADAT, light pipe, and we'll just ignore that for now because what we like about this audio interface is that it's portable, it's bus powered, so you can just connect it to your laptop and go wherever you want without any additional gear. And once you want to connect something via ADAT, you have additional gear and probably need some, some kind of uh, power supply for the external gear. So let's just focus on the analog four inputs and four outputs. And that looks really simple to handle, really easy to handle. There's not much uh, you worry about when you buy this device. And it has some controls, six buttons total and one knob to dial volume for either headphones or monitors or whatever. Yeah. What most people don't realize is that under the hood, it's a pretty complex beast because it, it's basically run or controlled by the same software that is used for the big boys, yeah, which have a lot more inputs and outputs and a lot more features. So uh, that can be a little bit overwhelming. And I will show you that's what it looks like, Total Mix Effects, the control software. And uh, usually, I think by default, you see three rows of channels. I've switched that to two-row mode because uh, then I can zoom in a little bit and it's easier for you to see now. But the first row is the hardware inputs and we will just focus on the first four inputs here, the analog inputs, the other ones are ADAT. Yeah. Then we have the software playback, that's basically what's coming from your computer, either your stereo out from the computer where you can listen to YouTube videos or whatever music. And uh, you have other outputs that you could use from your computer system. For example, if you want to to make some kind of, uh, in, in your DAW, you want to send some audio to an external uh, effects unit, like send and return, you could use these other out outputs um, from the software. Yeah, And then you have your hardware outputs, and each of these hardware outputs as an individual kind of a mixing desk. Just make sure that you are set to submix mode. And then when you pick, for example, here, my headphones, you can see I'm listening through my headphones right now. And there I have a mix. For example, I want to hear my own microphone, my own voice, where I'm talking now. That's my hardware input one with uh, phantom power engaged. And then I have the stereo out from my computer, so if I play anything, music or whatever, audio from my computer, I will hear it as well. But I can turn that down, for example, and when I switch to analog 1 and 2, which would be the speaker outputs, currently there is no speaker selected, so I can turn this down, all down, and when I switch back to the Headphone, you see that this is still up because it's a completely different mix. There are different mixes for each output, be it stereo or mono. I can have a separate sub-mix for the hardware outputs. So that's pretty pretty handy. Yeah. Now, um, if you run this system just in a basic configuration, you have one set of speakers, and you have one set of headphones, you could leave it everything like that, and it's really easy to understand and easy to handle. You could even kind of hide all these ADAT channels here if you don't use them. All right. But what happens if you, in your small home studio or project studio, you want to connect two sets of speakers to your little Babyface Pro? Obviously, 
we don't have for XLR outputs. Yeah, we only have two. But of course, you can use the headphones output. If you never use headphones for mixing or for anything, yeah, you could use these outputs to connect to a second set of speakers. And that's what we want to discuss today. Yeah, obviously, now you can use and you can name these, let's say, this analog one and two. I want to call this speak one. And the phones, we just use it as speak two. And now you can adjust the volume here for speaker two, which would be what I'm listening right now. And then, of course, you can turn it down and you can up the speaker one, yeah. And to make it easier to switch between this so you don't have to move two faders all the time, there's a nice little feature which is called snapshots, yeah. So let's just store this state. It's, it's a good volume. I'm listening now through my speakers, yeah. Um, let's st just store this state in mix one and now let's turn this down and instead this up and now let's store oops store this to mix two yeah and now i can switch just back and forth between these two speakers and as you can see the volume setting is stored and recalled it's pretty simple yeah very nice. So you can easily switch between these two snapshots. And it would be pretty easy as well to do that through the buttons that you have on your baby face. Yeah? For example, I could use the A and B buttons, which are the two center buttons in the top there, I could use them to switch between these two snapshots. So let's go back to Total Mix Effects, go to Options, Arc and Key Commands, and then here we have the A and B buttons, and uh, let's just say on this one I want to recall snapshot 1, and on this one, on the B one, I want to recall snapshot 2. Yeah, load. Okay, so what I do now is I press the actual buttons on the device. You can see that I don't have a camera connected right now, but let's just switch back and forth. You, do, you see that my mouse is not moving now, and you can see that I switch back and forth. Very nice. So that's pretty easy, and it will always recall the value or the, yeah, the fader position that I had set when I stored this particular snapshot. Of course, when you change that, and I recall the same snapshot again, it will come with a stored value. Yeah? Obviously. Cannot work in a different way. Unless you store the snapshot with a new value, but typically you want a specific volume of your speakers and you just set it and forget it. Now, Total Mix Effects has a fourth section which is called the control room, which is pretty nice as well for a couple of reasons. <coughs> and we will get to that now. And there you can assign outputs as speakers or headphones outputs. Now let's assign, for example, for the main out, we assign analog one and two and for main output B, which would be our second pair of speakers, we assign phones 3 and 4 output, because that's what we use to connect our second pair of speakers. All right. So now we have that connected. Wonderful. And obviously, we have two pairs of speakers here. So what can we do now? So first of all, hmm, there is nothing, nothing I can hear. That's because in this control room output, my microphone, I can't hear anything. You can still hear it, yeah, because I record the input. 
So I just up that, and now I am able to actually hear that on my speaker 1. If I want to listen on the speaker B, I just engage this button, speaker B. All right, so now we are on speaker B. So that's the way you can switch back and forth between these two speakers. But one thing I want to show you is that when I store this kind of state, including the assignment, yeah, the snapshots also store the assignments that I make here. So I store this current state in, uh, let's call it mix 2, because I'm on speaker B right now. And then I switch to speaker A, and we just store that as mix 1. Now when I switch back and forth, wonderful. Looks good. So I can activate, deactivate speaker B just through these. Yeah. The only problem is that currently, when I set, for example, I change speaker 1 output, and now I recall the snapshot, this volume will stay the same. And the same is happening here. So currently, when I recall a snapshot, no fader settings of my control room are being recalled. So how can we fix that? The main reason for that, let's start with that. The main reason for that is typically you want to have a fixed setting in your control room, how loud you want to listen to the music while you're mixing or while you're recording. You don't want that to, to mess around with that all the time. So that's good that by default it will not recall any volume settings. But you might want to have this recalled. And then you just go to Options and uh, Preferences. And here on Snapshots, do not load main volume. Uh, main volume. You can change that and just use these two dashes, like do not load Nothing. Um, basically, that means load everything. Yeah. So let's check that. Now I set, for example, the speaker to zero and this one up. And now I want to store snapshot one. And now I do the opposite, like this. And I want to store snapshot two. And now when I switch back and forth, you can see that the volume fader is recalled. It's stored and recalled, okay? So this way you can switch back and forth. The problem is I did not change this status of speaker A and B. Which one is active? Yeah, so that was basically my mistake. Let's do that again. For speaker 1, I want to store this state because now audio goes to speaker 1 only. You can see that here while I'm talking. So let's store this status here. And now I want to switch to speaker B. Take that up, take that down, and store this as 2. Now if we switch back and forth, you see... So there we go. We go back and forth between these two snapshots. yeah. Actually, I wouldn't even have to turn down speaker 1 because this button here, speaker A and B, basically mutes the other one. yeah. So I could just go to set my volume, let's say, the same for both speakers, and I store this, and then I store this, and now I can switch back and forth, and you can even see it on the level meter. Now audio goes to speaker 1, and once I press speaker B, audio goes to speaker 2, and nothing to speaker 1. So that's basically the automatic mute, speaker A and B. Wow, okay, that's cool. So I don't even need snapshots 
for this particular thing. And that's a good thing because snapshots store everything. Even if you, in the middle of the project, you want to add a little bit of this, yeah, of this analog to input. And if you recall the snapshot, boop, it's gone again. Yeah. So that can be really, really annoying. And uh, we don't want that to happen. So why should we work with snapshots for this monitoring solution? It's enough to just use this A and B switch here to jump between these two speakers. Just make sure that you do not, by accident, assign phones. Just stick with speakers. You have two pairs of speakers that you can use here. Main out and main out B. And for the main out B, we have selected the phone's output, the hardware output phones 3 and 4. So everything is fine now. And now the last thing I want to show is basically in the arc and key commands of Total Mix FX, you can assign functionality to these things because right now, you have no button to switch between speaker A and B unless you go to Total Mix and press this button here with your mouse. So let's just pick the Out button and instead of the default Select function, we pick speaker B, Toggle, and I hit OK. And now when I press the Out button on the RME, Babyface Pro, it will switch automatically between, and you can see it here in Total Mix, without me moving the mouse, it will switch between speaker A and speaker B. And the great thing about that is that now, when you want to control the volumes, it will automatically control the volume of the set of speakers that are active. So, if I, for example, right now, I am on speaker B, that means that it would show this LED here because we're using the phone's output. And when you turn this knob, you will adjust the volumes of speaker B. And once I press the out button again, it will automatically choose these outputs, one and two. And when you turn it, the volume will change accordingly. Yeah. So it's a really easy, straightforward thing. The problem is, with the RME interfaces, that there is lots of complexity in the control software and accordingly also in the actual interface because the interface has to do it. <laughs> That's just the control software. And most people don't expect that complexity. But once you get your head around it, it can do a lot of things. But don't don't rush it, yeah? Don't don't mess up your whole configuration. Don't switch it to, for example, here this kind of free mode, because that's another can of worms, yeah? I, I will probably explain that in another video. Just stick with a submix and uh yeah. Use the tools you have. I hope that was helpful for you guys if you run two sets of speakers on your little baby face pro. It's Everything is possible. <laughs> you just have to know how. Okay, that's it for now. Bye-bye.